Okay, we got the uh, unit set back up in the machine. Got the handles on it. Got the little cover over the shaft. Got the new gears in it. Put the uh, controller box on the vise instead of around it. So what we're doing here is we're setting up the zero on this uh, fixture. So I got minus two, I got plus two. So what I did was I took this little lock, put it on there. I got I got this at straight up. The uh, split line on that hub, straight up. So I got to make sure that these uh, these screws are unlocked. So with the uh, the hub, the gear locked, I should be able to rotate the uh, fixture. There, moved it two. Put it back on zero. Now I'm gonna go ahead and lock down these screws. What I did prior to this was I I indicated that. And I let it rotate 360 degrees just to get the slop out of the belt. So I got one division. So we're going to release the clamp on the uh, the pulley. is off so we're going to rotate it now what I did was I used this I used this here but last time I used the button on here which I should do again so I'm using the button on the uh, because I got to go in the other direction. See, this is the direction I had it going. Now see when I, if I want to use this switch, see when I move the switch, Just go in the opposite direction. What I wanted to do. So if you remember, that's why I notched out this cable. So I take this cable out. And 
and I rotate that 180 degrees because I have a, a notch on both sides. So I'm putting that in 180 degrees from where it was. So that I should rotate the opposite direction, which it does. And that's why I did that. That way I didn't have to have a switch on here. I could just rotate that cable. So we'll see uh, how close this is. Well, it's not, uh, not exactly where I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and do this whole process again. I'm going to put this put this on here. Tighten that down. I think what happened was when I rotated it last time, I moved it in the wrong direction but now we got everything going in the right direction take the clamp off. And uh Yeah, I don't really notice it being that much faster. Okay, it looks a lot better. go with that. So the part we're making is a, uh, a cylinder. It's got a bunch of holes in it. Holes are all uh, different angles from a center line. It's got, this one's got three sets of holes. 
We got the 080 tapped hole. And they're 40 degrees apart from each other. Except for the first one. And we got the 147 diameter hole. And there's four of those, and those are 90 degrees apart, except for the first one. And we got 312 diameter hole. Got four of them. They're 40 degrees apart, except for the first one. So what we got is the uh, got a zero line here. And then everything comes off that zero line. Some of them rotate backwards, like that first, this first hole rotates backwards. The rest of them rotate forward. Now, forward and backwards is irrelevant. It's, uh, I got it, I just put like this way and that way. I mean, you could, you can make it clockwise, counterclockwise, whatever you want to do. But anyway, this is, uh, I can't show you the original drawing because it's, uh, it's restricted, you might say. So, uh, all right, let's see what happens. Yeah, I ended up um, taking the indexer unit off and put the uh, old style ender indexer that we had up here to use this. When I was uh, checking the, uh, the parts, I was getting good reading when I was using the increment mode but then when I switched to the angle mode it uh, started giving me some funny readings so I took the unit off and I'm going to check the uh, when I did that motor step I changed it from a 5 to 1 I'm not sure what that did, but I think I'll take the the box back home and uh, change that back to a 5. As far as the gear ratio goes, I think it's okay. I'm pretty sure it was okay. And if I'm still having problems with it, might have to put the... Uh, five to one ratio back in there instead of the three to one that I put in now but it might be that motor step thing I'm not sure what that was but uh, anyway I couldn't uh, I don't have time to play with it now you know I gotta get these parts done I got two done and I got the one in the machine I gotta finish up and I got some other stuff to do. But I had to, uh, I did this before where I just uh, used increments and I had to convert it back into the uh, 360. So that's what I did here. Now I had this all written on one piece of paper and I separate it because you don't want to be looking at it and picking out the wrong uh, index angle some stupid mistake so by keeping each one separate I lessen the chance of uh, reading the wrong index so when I'm using the 080 I use this one then when I do the 312, I use this one, and uh, this one's a 147 diameter hole, which is the one on the end. 
But anyway, uh, that's what happened. That's too bad. I set all that up and I was hoping to use it. This would have been an ideal job. But then again, you know, when you're dealing with these uh, multiple indexes and you're not really sure where exactly you are in relationship to the zero, all you're doing is going incremental. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm really pushing for that encoder so I could keep a constant on where the part is in relationship to a circle. All right. Talk to you later.